If you bought a recorder, then have no fear. Oh, yeah. Recorder Corner is here. Hey there, third grade, Mr. B here. And you are watching this video because you are part of a very, very exclusive group of recorder owners. That's right, you have purchased a recorder. So first of all, congratulations. Congratulations on your brand new musical instrument. This is my recorder and hopefully yours looks very similar. Your recorder may have come in one of four different colors. You could have gotten a blue one like mine. Maybe you got a green one like this, a pink one perhaps, or maybe even a white one like this. All different colors, but they're all gonna sound the same. They're all gonna sound great once we get practice in them, okay? So you've got your recorder. You can put that off to the side for a second because I wanna tell you just a little bit about the recorder before we start playing. It's good to know what we're talking about before we start using it. So here's the recorder. Let me give you a couple names here of some different parts of a recorder, okay? First of all, recorder, this part's called the head joint, kind of like our head. This is called the body, like our body. This down here, it's called the foot joint. Now, you can actually take these apart. I wouldn't, don't do that. I'm just showing you what not to do, okay? Don't do it unless you're going to clean your recorder, which we'll talk about in just a second. We're cleaning your recorder is good, but try not to take them apart too much because sometimes it gets hard to keep them back together. Other names, you've got a little window right here. It's this little divot right there. And right up here is the mouthpiece, a very important part, okay? All of these parts together make up the recorder. Now, a couple of rules with the recorder, okay? Just so you don't drive anyone nuts and just so you're being safe, okay? Rule number one with your recorder. Make sure it's okay with people at your house before you start playing. These can get a little bit loud. They can be a little bit squeaky at first until you really know how to make a good sound. So make sure no one's asleep. Make sure people are awake. Make sure you're not bothering anybody, okay? It's really important just in general in life, but also with the recorder, okay? Now, for cleanliness and keeping yourself safe and keeping yourself clean, okay? Your recorder, the part up here, the mouthpiece, your hand should not ever touch that mouthpiece. You know why? Because your hands, whether you clean them or not, they're probably still a little bit gross and you don't want to put them on something you're going to put your mouth in, okay? So don't touch the mouthpiece. In fact, when you put your recorder back in that plastic bag you got, it should always go in mouthpiece first. You hold it by the foot joint. That way you're never touching that and that way you're keeping it nice and safe, okay? Now you can actually clean your recorder too because sometimes when you're playing it, you're going to be blowing, well, that sometimes every time you play, you're going to be blowing air through here and spit and saliva and all that gross stuff gets stuck inside of here. So every so often, maybe every week or so, you might want to give this a good clean. What's the best way to clean your recorder? Actually, it's very easy. Go to the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink, fill it with some soapy water. You can use Dawn dish detergent. It's a good thing. You're going to take the head joint off take the foot joint off, put them in there, let them sit for a little bit, and then you're going to rinse them and dry them with a paper towel or with a dish towel. It's probably a little bit earth friendly. Once it's completely dry, put it back together and your recorder should be good and ready to go. Just be careful you don't touch that mouthpiece, okay? Now, your recorder could be any color, could be hopefully a Yamaha brand like that. But when you play your recorder, there's a couple of rules we need to follow on how to hold your recorder, okay? Really important that we have some good rules to follow here so that we know that we're all doing it the same way, okay? With your recorder, I want you to notice there's a couple of different things to notice. There's, a, there's the mouthpiece, there's the foot joint. Mouthpiece obviously is gonna point up. The window points away from you. That also should mean that the side with all these finger holes is facing away from you. On the back, there is one big finger hole right there on the back. That should be facing you, okay? Now, the hand you want to hold your recorder with is your left hand. Which one is that? Well, you're in third grade. You should hopefully know that by now. Your left hand is the one that when you make an L with your pointer and your thumb. That doesn't look like an L, I don't think, because I'm looking at it. So for you, it looks backwards, doesn't it? Yeah, but for me, it looks like an L, okay? So hold it with your left hand hand, your left hand. It's the one that makes an L. In fact, that's really great because your pointer and your thumb are the fingers you're going to use to hold your recorder, okay? You're going to put your thumb on the back hole here, just like that, okay? You're also going to put your pointer finger right across from it like that, okay? Nice flat fingers. You don't want to curve them. Look how flat that is, just like that, okay? Nice flat fingers. Don't curve them have them nice and flat, okay? 
You can try that in your recorder, okay? You should be able to hold it with just these two fingers, just like that, okay? Now, if you're just putting fingers there, that's not really that much fun. Making music is what's fine. So let's get ready. Here we go. The mouthpiece is going to go in your mouth, but not very far, okay? It's actually going to go on your lip. Watch. It's going to go on your lips like that. And it's not going to touch your tongue. Your tongue is too far in. You're just going to sort of rest it like that. Now, before you put it in your mouth, let's actually take it away for a second. I want you to repeat after me. Listen. Da. Say that. Listen. Da. Try again. How about three in a row? Listen. Da. 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 Try it. Da. 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 I'm whispering. I'm not yelling. I'm not even really talking. I'm whispering when I do that. That is literally what you're going to do into this. You do not want to make a lot of noise. You do not want to blow a lot of air because it will not sound good. Trust me, I've played this for many years. It never sounds good. If you do anything more than whisper, you just want to whisper, okay? The other thing you want to make sure you're doing is blowing cool air. If you put your hand up, you can blow cool air or you can blow hot air. You want to blow cool air. Okay. Now, the recorder goes in your mouth. With your fingers like that, thumb on the back, point like that. Listen. That's it. Give that a shot. How did it sound? Was it a little squeaky? Maybe it was. If it was a little squeaky, maybe you have to fix something. Maybe your fingers were a little too curved. Maybe they weren't flat. Maybe you used too much air. You have to experiment a little bit. A lot of this is going to be experimenting and figuring it out. Okay? But this is what it should sound like. Okay? Just a nice, clear sound. No squeaks. Not too much. If you use just the right amount of air, just a whisper, and making sure your fingers are nice and flat, it's actually probably going to sound pretty good. Okay? Listen again. I'll play it. You echo back. Listen. Great. Practice that. That's a really, really important thing to practice. Just like that. Get that really sounding great. Now, when you get that sounding really great, Here's something else you can do. Um, we're covering the back hole here, of course, and we're covering the front hole. This hole you're always going to cover. But what about all these other holes? Well, you got another finger, don't you? Well, okay, let's do. What if I, what if I uh, cover another finger? Listen. Ooh. What happened to the pitch? It got lower, didn't it? I added a finger and the note got, it sounded lower. Good. Your other hand's been doing nothing right now. Take your other hand, give yourself some extra, now we have another finger in here. We need some extra stability. Get your other hand, just put it way at the bottom. Don't cover any holes. Put it right at the bottom of the foot joint. Not covering any holes, just cover it down there. Just give it a little extra support. So listen. Ooh, interesting. See if you can try that. Three of these three of these. Okay? If you can get those both sounding pretty good, well, how about we do one more? Listen. Ooh. Now, this note is going to be the hardest one to do with three fingers because this finger whether you're the strongest person in the world or you're the weakest person in the world, this finger is your weakest finger. Whether you are the strongest person in the entire planet, this is still your weakest finger, okay? So when you cover, you need to make sure you're really covering those holes. Now, speaking of which, when you move your fingers away, whoa, baby, look at that. Look at that. I have little circles on my fingers. Are these going to stay there forever? I hope not. They won't stay there. They'll go away after a little while. But you actually need to have these there or else you're not really covering the holes right. If you don't have those complete little circles on your fingers, well, it means you probably weren't covering those holes right. Again, they'll go away. Don't, don't panic. They will go away, okay? Now, 
How can you remember all this stuff? Well, fortunately, I have a website developed just for you. In the description below, I have a link to a Weebly site I put together, Recorder Corner, just like the Recorder Corner I am in right now. On the website, there are some documents that you can actually practice with, including the way that you hold the recorder, like this mouthpiece. Forgot to mention this. Don't have it sticking straight out. That's not right. You want to have it sort of angled down a little bit, sort of like a slope. If you put some up here, like a marble, it would roll right down. Okay, not straight out, not straight down, kind of at an angle like that from the side. Okay, and you'll see a picture of that on Recorder Corner if you go on there and explore around a little bit. Now, each of these notes that we played actually has a name. I'm going to tell you what their names are. This note is called B. This note is called A. And this note is called G. On the recorder and on pretty much any instrument, the notes have letter names. Now, they can also be solfege names like we've talked about in, in music class, but these are going to be called letter names on the recorder. And really any instrument like that, the piano, the flute, the trumpet, the clarinet, any of these instruments, we're going to use letter names, okay? This is B, this is A, and this is G. So these three notes, B, A, and G, are again on the website down there. You can look at it, you can see how the fingers are set up. You can actually see where they live on the staff. We're going to talk about that a little bit more next week. But for this week, the most important thing is that you practice these three notes, B, A, and G. You can play them so they don't squeak. You can play them so they're nice and clear. They're not too loud. They're not too quiet. They're just right. Goldilocks and the Three Bears method of recorder playing. All right? So for this week, take some time. Experiment around. Make sure it sounds great. Make sure it's not too loud. Make sure you check with people at your house first. Because next week, if you can play these three notes, we can actually play a song. And next week, we're going to learn a song. But for this week, you've got to learn these three notes. Now, if you would like to show me you playing these three notes, and I can give you some feedback. I can say, ooh, that sounds really good. Or, ooh, maybe you try your fingers a little differently. Or, ooh, maybe don't use so much air. I have a link down there for a flip grid, OK? Record yourself playing and send it to me. And I will be glad to send back, oh, hey, this is pretty good. Or, oh, hey, maybe try this a little differently, OK? Happy to help out, OK? So. Have some fun with your brand new recorder. Be safe with it. Be careful. But most importantly, make some music. Recorder Corner is here.